regional and global wind patterns. Please record the learning objectives for this video before you begin taking notes. You may want to pause the video here to write these down. Remember the park and the parking lot? Recall that as air over the parking lot was warmed during the day, more so than the air over the park, a pressure difference formed, resulting in a wind blowing from the park toward the parking lot. This is a local wind that occurred because heating air causes expansion, reducing the air density. Remember, as heated air rises, cooler, higher density air flows into the area. This movement of air is felt as a local wind. The wind is a result of air pressures trying to equalize. Some other ways of looking at local winds are convection cells that occur in a heated room. You would feel this as a draft. Air heated on one side of the room expands and rises. Cooling air on the opposite side contracts and sinks. The energy exchange maintains a flow of air and heat energy called a convection cell. Convection cells can happen in areas like on the sea coast as well. Living on the Gulf Coast, you've probably experienced sea breezes. This is a localized wind that occurs due to the differential heating of a large body of water and the land next to it. Water has a higher specific heat than land. So that means it takes more energy to heat up water than it does land. It also means that water cools off more slowly than land, holding on to the warmth longer. During the day, the surface of the land heats up more than the water, and the warmer air over the land rises. This pulls in a cooling breeze off the ocean. It's called a sea breeze. At night, the land cools more quickly than the water, so the ocean is warmer. The warmer air over the ocean then rises and pulls the air off the land. This is a land breeze. Winds will also occur on a larger scale across the whole country, in fact. These regional winds are caused by different pressure systems large masses of air that move across the country as conditions around the country change. That's what the H's and L's on the weather map help us to see. The green arrows indicate the direction of the wind. Let's start with low pressure systems. Low pressure systems are areas where warm, moist air rises. Adding moisture to the air often leads to cloud formation. The formation of clouds releases energy, which further warms the air, strengthening the low pressure system. More energy equals more air rising. It's this addition of energy and the buildup of the low pressure system that can cause storm development. We'll learn more about that later. High pressure systems are places where cooler, dry air sinks lower into the atmosphere. Although the air warms as it sinks, it may still be cooler than the surrounding air. This air spreads out at the surface, making room for more descending air. High pressure regions can also remain strong for many days. Cold fronts are associated with high pressure systems. Now let's put them together. Rising and falling air are part of convection cells. Vertical air movements generate surface winds that move from regions of high pressure to regions of low pressure. A pressure gradient is the difference in pressure between high and low pressure areas. Wind speed is directly proportional to the pressure gradient. This means the strongest winds are in the areas where the pressure gradient, the difference between the high and low pressure, is the greatest you'll have stronger winds going through this area and less wind right here where there's further space between the gradient lines. You've probably seen a surface map marked with H's and L's which indicate high and low pressure centers. You may also have noticed that surrounding these highs and lows are lines. These lines are called isobars. 
the word isobar breaks down like this. Iso means equal, and a bar is a unit of pressure. So an isobar means equal pressure. These areas of equal pressure are connected with a line. Everywhere along each line is the same pressure. The closer that the isobars are packed together, the stronger the pressure gradient, which means the wind is going to be stronger in this area. Notice the wind direction in this diagram. The yellow arrows are pointing clockwise around the high pressure system and counterclockwise around the low pressure system. Also, the direction of the wind is across the isobars slightly away from the center of the high pressure system and toward the center of the low pressure system. Why does this happen? This happens because the earth is always turning. This is a phenomena called the Coriolis effect. If I were to draw a line, a straight line on this circle while it's not turning, the line appears straight. But if you were to draw a straight line from the center to the edge of the circle while the circle was turning, the line would appear to curve. That's because the surface was moving when the line was being drawn. Likewise, the surface of the Earth is always moving. Because of the Earth being a globe, the area nearest the equator is moving faster than the area near the poles. Since the surface is not smooth, there is friction between the surface and the air above it. This friction combined with the movement of the Earth and the tendency of pressure systems to either converge and rise, as in a low pressure system, or sink and diverge, as in a high pressure system, all combine to give pressure systems their spinning tendencies. So wind basically follows a straight path, but since the Earth is moving underneath the winds, the Coriolis effect causes an apparent curvature of the winds. This is noticeable for regional winds because of the great distances that these winds will travel. If you look at wind directions along with the isobars, the apparent curvature caused by the Coriolis effect makes the winds blow along the isolines rather than across the high to low gradient. You can see how the winds around the low pressure system are blowing in toward the low center. You can see the wind is blowing out from the high pressure center, and between the, the green arrows show the wind blowing along the isobars. So how does all of this pull together into an understanding of global weather patterns? If Earth didn't spin, wind patterns would be simpler, as you see in the diagram on the left. However, due to Earth's rotation and the Coriolis effect, winds appear to curve as you see in the diagram on the right. This results in prevailing winds from the west and east and several convection cells in each hemisphere. Prevailing winds refer to the most common wind direction and speed at a particular location and time of year. In Louisiana, our prevailing winds in the summer are south to southeast in the other seasons, our prevailing winds are west to northwest or southwest. Remember, wind direction is the direction from where the wind is blowing. Another way to look at it is that winds are labeled according to the direction you face when you look into the wind. You should be able to address any of the objectives on this list after watching this video. If you can't, go back and review the video again to make sure you understand the concepts. If you still have questions, we'll discuss this more in class or you can come for extra help.